Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's HPM Lunch and Learn on flu and pneumococcal vaccine submissions to the PCRS. My name is Donald O'Neillon. I'm the head of marketing for Clan William Health, and with me I have Ronan Leonard, who is our support team lead for HPM. Uh, so today, a um, fairly simple demo of the new functionality that is coming to your HPM system at the moment, um, and Ronan is going to essentially provide a, a, an overview of how to use it and how to submit your vaccine claims to the PCRS to get paid for them. So without, sorry, before I hand it over to Ronan, just a bit of housekeeping. If anybody has any questions on anything that Ronan is kind of covering, there's a little pane on the right-hand side of your screen there that says questions on it. If you click the arrow beside it, you can type in your questions. That'll come directly through to me, and then I can put it to Ronan kind of either as we're going or maybe at the end, depending on the question itself. So look, honestly, if, if something is there that you're not sure about, please do ask us, or even if you're watching this later and have questions then, just drop your emails to G support at clanwilliamhelp.com. We are genuinely here to help and we want it to be easy and straightforward for you guys to use and, and, and we want you to get the most out of it. So look, that's enough from me. I am going to make Ronan the presenter now and Ronan will crack on with uh, the overview. So Ronan, that should be coming through to you now. Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Thanks, Donald. Uh, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, I have a bit of housekeeping myself too. The version number you need to be on of HPM is 3.7.3.0 and you can check that by going to help or about at the top so if you click on help and about you have your version number here or you can check it the version number is just on the top of the screen there as well okay and um, we're beginning the process of rolling this version out at the moment so you'll be getting it very soon just some other information too to submit these immunizations in the system you must have a health link certificate on the machine and additionally if you're submitting the pneumococcal you need to have a PCRS, PCRS certificate as well as it's needed to verify the GMS number for the patient. All right. Okay, so firstly, just to note as well in this version, you don't have to add in the flu or pneumococcus vaccines or batch numbers. Both the vaccines and the public batch numbers will already be in the system for you to use. So this is just, it's just, it's just gonna be handy for you. You don't have to add them. Now you can add your own private batches, ones that you won't be claiming for, but these won't show when you select the claim for a vaccine. They will only be there as an option when you select no. Okay, so we can start off straight away. We'll just start recording a, a vaccine in a patient's chart. We'll just go into a test patient now. So if I go into test influenza, we double click in there and go into this patient's immunizations. And what you click down the bottom here is add new schedule. And when you click on this, you can see there's two, two new uh, schedules there that you can select from. We'll select flu vaccine and click okay. And then just click okay on this to start it from today. As you can see, it appears as a schedule on the right-hand side. So you make sure that schedule is highlighted and then you click on create from schedule. And once, this, once you click on create from schedule, you get this pop-up and the first couple of fields that appear are dose and claim for this shot. Now dose appears because, because you could administer more than one uh, uh, influenza va vaccine per, per, um, per, per flu season. Sorry, my apologies. So I like this, we select dose one and we select claim for this shot, we select yes. And once we click on yes here, you can see all these other fields are populated, okay? So we select patient consent. We select does this complete the course? We want to select no because it's our first dose. We select our risk factor. We'll just select age 65 and over. And then the rest of the fields are populated as you can see. Uh, the responsible HCP is populated there. The PCRS contract number is coming in because I have that add, I, ha I have that added to, to the HCP, so it's populated by default, but you can hand type this in and it'll be saved against the HCP going forward. The patient county is Cavan, ethnicity white Irish, patient mobile, you can populate that, that's not necessary though. Test email address and the patient PPSN. So if I click okay on this now, now I'm getting that, that's actually, hold on, that's the wrong PPS number. Hold on one second, I'll populate the right one. So two, two, three, six, five, eight, seven, here. So Ron, while you're doing this, I suppose, yeah. just to be clear, these are all automatically populated kind of once you've gone into the patient, it pulls from the data that's there already. Yeah, it pulls from the, it pulls from the, patient, the patient information as well, yeah. yeah. 
Cool. Okay. So I'll just click OK on that, and then it'll open up the more familiar vaccine window that you've all seen before. So the immunization type is influenza, and you can't change this. And then your vaccine, you click on the drop down here, and your batches are all there. Okay. So we select any batch there we want. Click OK. Make sure your dose is there. Make sure you're administered by is populated. Your site, left arm, and your method is populated as well. So once you're happy with everything done and you just click on submit, and we give it a minute now to think about it, it's being sent off to the HSE now. Okay, so that's been submitted successfully, and that's that you've given that influenza vaccine now. Okay, now so say a couple of months have gone by and the same patient is coming back for the for the the second shot. We just do the same again. We highlight flu vaccine. Oh, hold on a second now. We highlight this, click on create from schedule. And what we're selecting here is dose two because it's the second dose. All right. And then we select claim for this shot. We select yes. Patient consent, yes. And then this new field here, is this clinically necessary? So we select yes. The risk factors, we select the same one, age 65 and over. And then all the other fields are pre-populated there. Now they're not all required. Email isn't required, but we'll just leave that in anyway. And then if I click OK on this, we get the same field again. We can't change this because it's influenza and the vaccine, we just select a batch number again. OK, and we click submit. Oh, well, hold on, sorry. We check the site, see? And we have the doses there and the administered by, and then we just click on submit. And that's that gone as well. Now, we can go through the pneumococcal now as well. So if we go into a different patient, just bear with me. Go to test pneumo. And same thing, just into immunizations. We click on add new schedule. And as you can see, you have your pneumococcal vaccine schedule here. We click OK on this and click OK to start it from today. Now. As you can see, it's there populated. So we highlight this again, same way. Click create from schedule and you get your pop-up here. Now there's no dose one or dose two because there's only the one dose. So we click claim for the shot, yes or no, and we click yes. Patient consent, we select yes. And we choose our risk factor, 65 and over. And again, we have our registered HCP and our contract number that's pre-populated. We select our county, our ethnicity, Mobile, I'll just pop in. Let me pop in a test email, although it's not required, but we'll pop it in anyway. And then it brings in the PPS number. And as you can see, it's bringing in the GMS number as well, because it needs to check that on the PCRS site. We click OK on that. And again, it's selected pneumococcus here, but we can't change it. And then all our vaccine batches are appearing here as well. Okay, and then we have our dose, our administered by, our site, we select, and method. And then again, we just click OK on that. And that, that's it submitted. So that's really it. That's, that's the two uh, vaccines submitted. So what we can do now is we go into our tasks section, and then we go into claim tracker, and then into our vaccine claim tracker. And once we click on that, you'd be very familiar with this you've seen it before for COVID, but now yeah, you have an option here for type. And we select this drop down here. And as you can see now, there's a type there for influenza and for pneumococcus. So if I select influenza, and then I change the status to awaiting acknowledgement and hit search, you can see that there's two there waiting for acknowledgement. And if I do pneumococcus as well, and click search, you can see the one there that we submitted. And you can also check uh, ones that have been ex accepted and, and rejected. That's really it, Donald. It's quite straightforward. Um, so I'm not sure if there's any questions or? Yeah, there are a few, um, which we may or may not know the answer to, but we'll give it our best. Um, first off, on the um, patient information screen that comes up there, there was a consent tab, and there was a question in of, uh, do the practices need written consent also, or is it is it just enough to ask the patient have they consented? That I don't know. Probably best to check with the PCRS or the HSE on that, I'd say. Yeah, I'm no, not we, 100% yeah. sure. 
that's fair enough. Now I, I didn't think we would be able to advise on that, but I, I, yeah, I would check with them, and rather than us saying something that's wrong, I think best to, to yeah, check exactly. with them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, just to double check. Yeah. To be sure. To be sure. Um. Okay. So next up, um. So is the responsible healthcare professional is is that the clinical uh, HCP that's giving the vaccine, or is it the person who will receive the payment? Um. It's the registered HCP against in the patient's chart. Okay. So that's what's selected there. Now, let's, if I change that to someone else, let's just see. And if I go back in and I'll just, I'll just, just try and administer another one. And sorry, Ron, I'm just while you're doing that, yeah. uh, someone has written in there on the written consent to say that, say that the IMO said that um, on the webinar last night that no written consent was required. So look, oh, again. Okay, perfect. Yeah, uh, but again, look, if you want to be sure to be sure, it's no harm to to verify it with them. It's no harm to verify, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's nothing really else I can think of, Donald. Is there any more questions coming in there? There are a few, yeah. Um, so uh, one is, if, if a patient has had a vaccine already, will the system highlight this? And I don't think, sorry, this is me speaking for Ronan, but I don't think it will, but I think you can record it, and that's the administered elsewhere tab that was in there. Is that right, Ronan? Yeah, it'll, it'll be it'll be there on the list, uh, and look, it'll be there there as recorded. So if I try and add one now, just bear with me one second. I'll go into the other patient one second now. I'm going to go into immunizations here. So obviously they'll show up here that they've been added already. And the flu vaccine will be completed as well. But if I just try and create from schedule again, and if I select dose one, and we're not gonna claim for this shot, and we're gonna tick the box for administered elsewhere, click okay. Now I can't put in a batch number there because I'm not claiming for it. The batch numbers will only appear, uh, the batch numbers that we added are the only ones that will appear there, unfortunately. Now you can add batch numbers, but you shouldn't really be adding batch numbers, they should all be there for you already um, for public batches. Okay, yeah, I think okay. that's that's good advice. Might save a bit of confusion. Um, yeah. And then, um, uh, sorry, and then can the date actually? Sorry, just on this one as well. The follow-up question uh, saying if it was all if it was given already in a pharmacy, will that be flagged? Patients aren't always sure. I, I don't think it will be flagged. I think you, you will need to ask the patient themselves. I don't yeah, think- Yeah, 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 you'd need to ask yeah. the patient. I don't think it checks a central database to see if it's been given already, you know? Yeah, no, 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 but it might be a suggestion for the PCRS if they, if they could add that into their system to track it. But I, th I think it is a, a, a verbal kind of question of yeah. asking how to receive this already. Um, and then just another question in there of, can the date be changed on the submission? Um, I'm not I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but if can it be? I suppose. Um, well, you could. If I add new schedule here, now let's just say I'll create from schedule again. One second now, sorry. Yeah, the date really comes from when you're adding it at the start when you're adding the schedule mm -hmm. and you put it populates with today's date. I'm not sure why you would want to change that date, but you could probably put it in for a month's time if you wanted to. Um, but that would only affect the recall. It wouldn't have anything to do with the, uh, the immunization. It would only be the recall schedule that that date would pertain to, you know? Okay. Okay, cool. And then just another question on the actual submission status. So if it's listed as accepted, does that mean that it will be paid or do you yes. know how that works? Yeah. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it means it can be paid. Okay, so it's essentially accepted is paid and then anything rejected is not paid and there will be reasons listed for the rejection. Yeah, it'll be the status. On the right hand side, there'll be a reason and you can hover over it and it'll tell you what the problem is. And obviously you can open the chart then and make ch make changes where you need to, you know. And then, yeah, fix it and, and, and resubmit it then for payment. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay. Well, look, I don't think there's any more questions coming in. If anyone has any questions, get them in quick. But yeah, as I said, I'm earlier, just looking on my list here. I think I've covered everything. And let me just influence those two. Yeah, I have everything covered there. 
Yeah, well, look, and there'll be uh, relief notes on the website as well, Donald. You're going to put them up on the website, aren't you? I am indeed. Yeah, yeah. And we'll send out an email to everyone with uh, the release notes and with a copy of this or link to this uh, to the recording of this webinar. Again, look, if you do have any questions, um, drop drop an email to GP support at clanwilliamhealth.com and Ronan and the guys will be uh, happy to answer them and get you up and running uh, with this as quickly as possible because we know everybody is keen to get this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> running so uh, we're working as hard as we can to get it out there quickly so hopefully you all should have it soon and look we'll leave it there so um oh sorry just a question came in there at the last second ronan uh how can uh, people update to the latest version of hpm that's that's from our side we're rolling it out now starting sort of today um so it's going to be rolled out in the coming weeks so if you give the desk a call if you want to be sort of added up the list but It'll get to everyone next week, hopefully, you know. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. And then I suppose it is just to check the version number and it is 3.7.3.0. That's the version you need. So yes. if you log in and see that in your system, you'll know you're on the latest version. If you don't see it, as Ron said, give give the desk a shout and, and ask to be prioritized as well. Yeah, but but like I say, it'll be rolled out now fairly quick as everyone yeah. sort of needs it, you know. So yes, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, look, Ronan, I think that's, uh, that's all the questions that we've gotten in so far, and I think that was a really comprehensive kind of overview, so hopefully everybody, once they get it, will be able to start using it straight away and start getting those uh, flu vaccines and pneumococcal vaccines out there as quickly as possible. So, look, thanks a million okay. for everyone for joining us, and uh, special thanks to Ronan for coming through the demo and answering all those hard questions as well. So, um, thanks very much. Hope everyone has a lovely rest of their day and a great weekend, and uh, thanks again for joining us. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.